Time for another Fixing Faulty eBay junk video and this time I've got myself something a little unusual, something that I'd personally never seen before and it's this here, it's a controller, it's for the Sega Master System and when I first saw this I thought oh, that's kind of unusual, it must be some sort of unofficial third party controller but it turns out it's actually an official first party Sega peripheral um, apparently it's quite uncommon and a little rare uh, so I thought yeah, I'll pick that up and see if I can get it working again Paid a little more than what I'd usually pay for a broken controller just because it is slightly uncommon and I paid 4 99 for this with 2 99 postage. Uh, so I'm hoping it's just a, an easy fix, just needs cleaned up. I'll show you the description just here. It says, rare Sega controller, been sat in my cupboard for a while. Last time I checked I had a couple of buttons not working. Probably an easy fix if you want to open it up and it's sold as, work, uh, as not working spares of repair. So that's it there. It looks kind of interesting, it's got some red buttons, it's got the Sega logo across the, the front of it there and looks to have some, you can see there, rapid fire type uh, options on it. And it's already arrived, got it here in the little jiffy bag. So I'll get this opened up, we can test it out and see what we're dealing with. But I'm hoping it's just a case of stripping it down, cleaning it up and giving it a good uh, refurb and it should be fine. But I'm quite intrigued to see what this controller is like. Let's get it opened up and find out. Pull tab there. There's an invoice in there. And that, this is it. It's pretty big. It's bigger than I expected. For a master system controller anyway. And the first thing I'm noticing is the, uh, the kind of cable at the top. There's a little uh, worn. It's popped out the top of the, the housing. It's not a big deal though, I can sort that. And there it is. It's a bit grubby, as you'd expect for something this age. You can see the <laughs> all the dust that's gathered in these parts. And these are just little, I suppose they're turbo sliders. Just little variable resistors. Which is kind of interesting. In the back there there's the model number and everything, so Model number 3021. It is a, an official Sega uh, product. So, the next thing to do is to uh, open this up and we'll see, see what's going on inside. I'm just noticing there's actually a, a screw missing, so maybe someone's already been into this already, which is a little worrying. It's always a bit wor worrying when you, you get these things and someone's already been in and really messed around with things, but. We'll take a look anyway, see what we're dealing with. So I've quickly fired up the master system, connected the controller just to test out, see if it's working or not. I've got my copy of Robocop vs Terminator playing there. And it does seem to work. The buttons do take a little extra effort to uh, make the character move on screen, so if I press right there, I really need to push that quite hard. But they all seem to work okay. Press up and fire, he fires up. Fire works, jump works. So, so far, so good. It probably just needs a really good clean. I'm not too sure about these auto-fire uh, buttons yet. Yeah, you can see he's kind of firing faster with those. They probably need a good clean as well. So, next thing to do, strip the controller down and uh, clean it and test it again. So, just start off by taking the, the screws out the back of this. And see what's going on inside. And today I've got myself a one of these magnetic bowls. I'm just going to pop the screws in there. Usually I use my uh, what do you call it the ice cube <laughs> cube tray, but that's totally full at the moment with other projects that are half done. So just using the magnetic bowl for now, which is very handy. Keeps everything nice and together and safe. Let's take this final screw out here. So there's a screw missing from this. There should be five. There's only four. And the back just pops off there. You can see it's reasonably clean in that. So what are we dealing with here? Uh, it looks okay. All these wires are connected which is a good, a good sign. The thing I'm more interested in is the condition of this side of the pad. You can see that's a bit scored up with this resistor here. Um, 
renewable resistor 2 and 1 it's marked as, sorry I'm taking this out of shot so VR2 and VR1, that's your rapid fire so these contacts will all need cleaned up, that's not a problem um, let's check the, the rubber on the, the membranes and these seem okay as you can see they're, they're pretty filthy but that's what you expect you can see they've got a bit of a, a sheen to them, that's not good I need to clean that off same with the A and B button again you can see how these over over time they they go shiny and they get a kind of a glossy finish on them which is no good so I'll clean those up and here you've got the you can see the contacts for the those sliders just pop that out of there you can see all the filth that's built up around those over the years so another thing I'll need to give a good clean just the directional pad <laughs> that's disgusting you can see there all the the filth and the gunk so next thing to do will just be to uh, give these a good clean or throw them in the sink it's kind of interesting to note notice here is the, um, the two bits here for as if there was going to be a, a start and a select uh, button which is kind of interesting to see on a a master system controller. It's almost like a, an NES or NES Nintendo system. You get the start and select in the middle. But uh, as I said before, this is a, an official Sega controller. So there you go. What I'll do now is I'll throw all these bits in the sink, give them a good wash. This I'll use some. Uh, uh, I'll just use a, a Q-tip cotton bud, whatever you want to call it, with some alcohol in it to clean these contacts up and then uh, that should be good to go. Uh, so the next thing to do is I'll clean everything up. I've just popped the buttons and the housing in the sink there to, to soak in some warm soapy water and while they're, they're soaking I'll just quickly show you my little trick that I like to use to clean up these uh, membrane contacts. Uh, some people use like alcohol or, or cleaning products or what have you. What I like to do though is uh, just get the, the contact like this here and just pop it like that so it's, it's protruding from the, the membrane and all I get is a, a piece of white paper, it doesn't need to be white it can just be like a post-it note, a yellow post-it note or whatever and then very gently rub the, the contact across the, the paper and you can see uh, you can see that the dirt comes off it there and rubs onto the paper let me show you just there you can see it's starting to go back to its dull uh, matte finish uh, and the, the sheen is starting to come off it, so I'll just do that until it all comes off. Like so, not too much or you'll end up damaging it. Just enough to, to take off that top layer of sheen, and there you go. It's got a nice uh, dull finish to it again, unlike that one there next to it. Now that these are cleaned up, you can see all the the dirt that's come off the, the contacts there. I just get some compressed air and blow off the uh, the black powder that's now sitting on these pads. And I might also just throw these into the sink and give them a, a quick clean. Interesting to note that says Hori on it. For these contacts here I'll just get a, a Q-tip with some alcohol on it and give it a good uh, good white down, you can see that's removing all the dirt from there just do that across the whole board until it's all nice and clean so that's everything all cleaned up and ready to reassemble all I need to do now is put it all back together again and test it out the only thing I'm missing is one of these screws from the back of the, the casing here but I'm not too bothered about that, it shouldn't be a problem and what I'll end up doing anyway is looking through my parts bin and finding a a replacement screw there uh, but for now I'm not too bothered about it so what I'll do is get this all put back together again and we can test it out and see if there's any buttons that aren't working or, or what have you but I'm hoping that that shouldn't be a problem it will work fine the first time
gets it reassembled and ready to test. And the final thing I like to do with any old controllers or consoles that I refurbish is just give them a quick wipe down with some uh, WD-40 on a, a microfiber rag like this here. So uh, I'll quickly do that. And it doesn't harm the console at all. I've been doing this for years and years and years. It doesn't damage the plastic. All you can do is just get a little tiny bit of WD-40 in a rag like that there. And just give the controller of the console a quick wipe over with it. Just the tiniest amount and it really brings the original shine back to the plastic. A lot of people have mentioned in previous videos that oh, it's going to damage the plastic or it's not good for the controller or good for the console but it's fine. I've been doing it for years and I've had no negative side effects to it. It just brings out the original shine to the plastic and makes it look nice and new again. So I'll quickly wipe the, the cord down as well. And the trick to it is don't spray the WD-40 onto the, the controller of the console. Spray it onto the, the rag and use a microfiber rag like this one here. And uh, you should be good to go. If you spray it onto the the controller of the console itself, then you're going to get big blotches of uh, oil, and that's not good. And also, you don't want the the smell of WD-40 lingering for for days afterwards. So there we go. And I just wipe down, and we're good to go. And there we go. That's it. All set. Refurbished. Looks nice and clean and shiny, and you can see there's no more dirt or grime in these grooves anymore. Looks nice. So let's hook it back up and test it out. I've got the controller hooked up to the console again. I'm just playing some Sonic the Hedgehog here to, to test it out. And it works perfectly, no problem at all. I'll quickly demonstrate that for you. So jump one, jump two, they work fine. Down, up, left and right. Yeah, no problem there at all and you don't even need to push them that hard, they just they just work as they should. The rapid fire also works, so if I push down the button and move the slider, you can see Sonic jumps there. Put that back down, same with this one. Let's move that up, and he jumps at different speeds depending on where you put the, the slider, which is great. Uh, so overall, yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's a, a really nice controller to hold as well. Your fingers kind of curve around the top part here, which is nice. Uh, so, very happy with that. It looks nice and shiny and new again. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again soon. After refurbishing the controller and making the first part of this video, I actually discovered some more information out about this particular peripheral. and. What I noticed was when I was playing it, I thought, this feels very, very similar. It looks very similar to uh, another systems controller, that being the, the NES or the Famicom. And as you can see, the button layout is near enough identical. If you take a closer look here, you'll see the, the moulding on the D-pad is pretty much the same as well. Uh, and that kind of goes along with when I had this opened up, you can see those spaces inside for what looked like a start and a select, which the Master System just doesn't have. The other thing I noticed was, if you look here, it's labelled as B and A, which is a <laughs> very strange for a, an official Sega product since they use 1 and 2 and start, at least on the, the Master System they did anyway. So yeah, I thought that was, that's kind of odd. So I did some research and uh, sure enough, what I discovered was this controller was originally designed by Hori and released in Japan for the, the Famicom. There's quite a few different versions of it and I'll show you some uh, pictures, I'll throw some of those up at the end of this video here. Uh, but here in Europe, I suppose Sega bought the rights to the, the design and released it as an official Sega product. Um, uh, they called it the SG Commander and again they've got pictures of the, the official packaging as well. But it is Weirdly, it is a, an official Sega product. You can see here the even the, the plug has the stamp on it. Uh, on the back, you've got, as I've shown before, you've got all the... If I can get that in shot. You've got all the the correct product number and the, the stamp and everything on it. 
but uh, underneath it all this is originally for the Famicom which B and A and those start and select and it's still got the, the hoary stamps on the, the circuit board and one of the membranes and these buttons as well so just thought I'd add that on there to the end of this video for anyone that's interested um, if you see one of these for well, one of them that's branded as the Sega then I'd pick it up because it's, it's quite an unusual thing to find uh, quite unusual for Sega who were a hardware manufacturer to I suppose buy the rights from Hori to manufacture a, uh, a Master System controller based on a Famicom uh, design very odd but anyway there you go that's just another little oddity uh, that I've found from eBay so thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon